I can't tell you how much I appreciate the team that we have, all of you two, everyone, but the team that has kept this worship service going across the last now we're pushing two years, not quite, but it has kept this service going, where it, whether it was at my house or here or wherever it was. And today, to be able to call to Shirley that we can just do this while Sally and, and Sarah are away, I want to give a shout out to particularly to Janie, who is handling everything back there today, and to my brother David, in Pittsburgh, the, the miracle of electronics is just baffling to me. He told me the other day, he said, I'm glad I'm not the preacher. He said, I said, I'm glad I'm not the guy behind the camera. But he's, he's handling the technical aspects of this service from 450 miles away. Did will we ever have thought of such a thing that we could handle that and do that and it's just, I, I know people are threatened and they say, no, I don't know about here that I've heard. But it's just wonderful that we can continue to worship together wherever we are, whenever we want to, because this will be on YouTube this afternoon, whatever time we want to. And all those who have worked so diligently and all the help that we've received and continue to receive financially. So after that commercial and particular thanks to those who are involved, let's turn to the weird story of the talking donkey. I'm not going to say the word A-double-S that it says in the Bible because people get all messed up about that. You start saying that, the next thing you know somebody's all hung up about how is that going to work, you know, that doesn't sound right and so forth. I don't know how you feel about weird stories and, and strange things that happen, but I, I think there's messages in them. I think there's things that they're to tell us. One of the strange the stories that, that I like that I was going to share to just start out with this, my favorite movie, and I know it, probably no one in the, in the Western world with the exception of my family could probably tell you what that is, is the movie that starred Jane Fonda came out in 1965, Cat Ballou. Anyone remember Cat Ballou? Jane Fonda, yeah, I see hands going up all around. Well, her character, Catherine Ballou, Cat, and her father was a rancher who was being driven out from his fields by the oil companies or something. He was a real character before he suddenly got shot right between the eyes on the way to the outhouse. He was started out by talking about when she would say, you gotta be more careful, Daddy. You gotta keep, got you, look behind your back, see what's going on. He said, do you see anything at all? Do you see anything? He said, Catherine, Cat, you're just like your mother. She used to see little green men coming down the wall, things in the room that no one could understand. She would get all, get all, she said, you're just like that, Catherine. And here I am, I'm trying to go out to the, into the yard. I'm surrounded by two, three people. I'm surrounded by uh, an uncle, a fool, and a drunk. That's what she said she was found. Played by Lee Marvin in the movie, a man who played drunks better than anybody I've ever known. He could play a drunk like nobody else could. Do you see anybody anywhere? And all at once, guy walks, steps up, shoots him dead right there. Made the point, didn't it? Strange story, though, just to start that out. Sometimes there are strange things that lead us, that guide us to where we are. They may not be little green men coming down the green wall. They may not be people stepping out of the woods to scare us. But things that prevent us from going somewhere where we didn't need to be, or where some disaster occurred, something that compels us and moves us to go somewhere where we needed to be. Remember the story several years ago that Carl Smith, the director of the women's course and longtime director of the chancel, there, the concert choir at Kentucky State University, First Christian too, was driving home from the from the women's chorus one of the nights in practice in northern Kentucky, driving down I-75 back to, back to Frankfurt. 
And he said he was tired from the day. He was, he was getting a little, he could tell he was sleepy. And he could tell he was starting to doze off. And all at once, as plain as anything, he heard the voice, Hey! Hey! Just like that. And he woke up and he was about to run off the road into a guardrail. That gives me cold chills. That's happened to you, hasn't it? Maybe not exactly that, but something that grabs your attention. Well, here we have a story that because Shirley alluded to it in talking about talking snakes at the library, I didn't hear it. Did that t snake talk? It did not talk. That would have been well worth a story in the newspaper. <laughs> that would have been worth national news. That would have been like the time Spike and his buddies made the national news with their island out across the way from the Bradleys out at Craig's Creek. That would have been national news. But here we have a story of a talking donkey. If you want to read the whole story in Numbers 22, I send my blessings upon you because it's kind of complicated, but it's got to do with a prophet. It's got to do with telling Israel what it's supposed to do. It's got to do with, telling, with God telling this prophet Balaam what he wants him to do. And Balaam resisting. And then the story that comes to us in Numbers. It, it's in the 22nd chapter. And I'm going to excerpt a, a little of the most exciting part. That begins in verse 21. So Balaam rose in the morning and saddled his donkey and went with the, princes of, with the princes of Moab. But God's anger was kindled because he went. He wasn't supposed to. And the angel of the Lord took away and he took the and stand in the way of his adversary. adversary. Now he was riding on the donkey, and two servants were with him. And the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand. And the donkey turned aside and went into the field. Balaam got mad and said, what's the matter with you? And hit the donkey. A little bit later, down here, the Lord, the angel, the donkey sees the, do sees the angel again standing in front of him on a narrow path. The donkey, the donkey sees the angel. Not Balaam, just the donkey. And the donkey stops, nearly pitches Balaam over into the, into the grass. Balaam whacks the donkey again. What's the matter with you? Why don't you keep stopping in the middle of the road? Third time, verse 26, the angel of the Lord went ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn either left or right. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she laid down in the road on Balaam. She just laid down. She just stopped and, and that was it. Well, Balaam really got mad then. He got up and struck the donkey with, with his staff. And uh, he said, if I had my knife with me, I'd kill you. Because <laughs> here we got this donkey just going along. And, you know, the, the donkeys sometimes, they can be stubborn, can't they? they? I've never had too much dealing with them, but I understand that they can be. And so the donkey had done these things. And then in verse 29... And Balaam said to the donkey, Because you have made sport of me, I wish I had a sword in my hand, I'd kill you. The donkey, th then the donkey says to Balaam, Am I not the donkey upon which you have ridden your whole life this day to this day? Was I ever accustomed to do anything to you, to hurt you? He said, No. Then the Lord, Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel standing in the way with his drawn sword, and he turned aside. What do we make of that story? Okay, we won't go into donkeys talking any further. I think we've got the idea. Part of the idea is this. The Lord can make happen whatever he wants to make happen. And here we have a talking donkey. Commentaries say that this story is a little bit out of place. Where did it come from? Where did, how did it fit in this narrative of Balaam and the people of Israel? Well, it fits kind of as a comic relief to think that here, here is something where we have some humor that the writers, 
and the compilers of the scriptures have felt that this is something that's kind of gets our attention, doesn't it? If I'd have just come and talked about Numbers 22, you may be about asleep now, but I mean, you would have been dead out and gone by this time if I'd have just talked about the story in Numbers 22. So, what does this, what does God have to say? What is the point of this? First of all, I think, is this. God knows what he wants us to do. And we're just trying to figure it out. God knows what he wants us to do. And we go through life trying to figure it out. How often, if you have a serious prayer life, and I hope that you do, do you say to God, please lead me, guide me. What do you want me to do? What direction do you want me to go in? What do you want me to say? Where do you want me to go? We're trying to figure out what it is that God wants us to do personally in the course of your life. Maybe you're facing a challenge that you don't talk to anyone else about, but you can talk to God about it. You say, God, what do you want me to do? What do I need to do? Corporally, in the life and the work of this church. I spend a lot of time praying about this church, where we're supposed to go, what we're supposed to do, how we're supposed to reach out, how we're supposed to get more people in here, how we're supposed to get more people out there, how we're supposed to involve people, and how our ministry reaches out to touch the lives of others and to bring the work of Jesus. What are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? Balaam and the talking donkey, the donkey told him what he was supposed to do, but just stop it. That would get our attention. If a donkey came up on the elevator and walked right down here and said something, I guarantee you that would get your attention. Sometimes we need something that gets our attention. They used to say in the preaching days, back when I was in the seminary a few years ago, at least 10, Joe, it was 10 years ago that I was in the seminary, that things that are, that would be like a talking donkey down here, they're sensational. That a church that offers someone, everyone who comes first time visitor will give you a goldfish. How many of y'all would like to have a goldfish? Anyone? I see no votes for a goldfish. What if you said it'd give you a $50 bill? You know, give you a $50 bill. They were, they were leaders kind of to, 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 to get people to come. Like one preacher they talked about who said, I'll do this. I'm going to tame Sunday in my sermon. I'm going to name the seven people I'd send to hell. House was full. Everybody was scared to death. They thought, my name on that list. Well, it turned out it was things like sin and hate and lust and all of that. It wasn't really people. See, it wasn't really telling the truth about that. What does God have to do to get our attention? He knows what he wants us to do. We're trying to figure it out. Secondly, we proceed down the path, just like Balaam and a donkey. We just keep going down the path where we're heading. Sometimes the doors open, don't they? Sometimes the doors close. The door closes and directs you in that direction, another direction. How do we get to where we're going to be? Balaam just keeps riding along because he doesn't know what's happening. Every time he gets somewhere, the donkey just suddenly stops. Now, donkeys are prone to do that. They have a mind of their own. And when they do, Balaam says, now what are we going to do? I'm getting tired of this. But then the Lord appears, and the Lord works out with Balaam what it is that he wants him to do, where he is that he wants him to go, and then he thanks the donkey for taking care of him. I leave you with this. Be attuned and listen to what God wants us to do, to where he wants us to go, to how he wants us to respond in situations to other people, to whatever it may be. There are challenges for each and every one of us. We don't want to be one of the strange stories that's told here, but we want to draw from this to see that where God is leading us, where he leads me, I will follow.